David Kiersey called them the promoters. I've also heard doer, adventurer, and dynamo, and the stereotypes I have seen are usually built off of one of these. Both of the STP types are often associated with the quintessential action movie hero, and from my experience this is especially true for the ESTP, who is often portrayed as an athletic, energetic, live-in-the-moment playboy with highly developed powers of persuasion and social navigation, a con man with a charming smile and an icy heart, or in other portrayals, as lacking intellectual interests in exchange for street smarts and common knowledge. Like many stereotypes, this greatly exaggerates aspects of the ESTP while completely ignoring others, as well as failing to define any core aspect of their character. As with all of these videos, I aim to describe the core of the ESTP profile and the typical ESTP as an individual just as capable or incapable of becoming a hero of the history books as any other personality. As always, let's break down what constitutes the ESTP functionally. They are a perceiving type, meaning that they prefer extroverted perceiving and introverted judging. This means that they base their judgment criteria on subjective inner information, while simply observing and drinking in objective information and experiences. You could say that they are more receptive towards the outside world and more aggressive towards their inner experience. Their preferred way of doing this is through extroverted sensation and introverted thinking. Extroverted sensation is photographic, it has the most direct relationship with objects of all the functions, giving them the clearest and most realistic perspective. Introverted thinking is deductive. It seeks to develop an internally consistent logical system by deducing all the necessary implications of a set of premises. Third, they are very similar to the ISTP. Both prefer extroverted sensation and introverted thinking. The ESTP, however, prefers extroverted sensation more than introverted thinking. Nevertheless, they are in some sense the same type, or at least sister types. I personally like to call STP types the warriors, because they combine a sharp and vivid perception of the world with rigorous ordering and logical deduction within their minds, building a logical system of the real world and thus helping them to smoothly navigate it like a soldier in battle. Of course, warrior is merely a nickname to help me remember the STP nature, and does not mean that STPs are all Navy SEALs or that they have any interest in war at all. The ESTP, then, is a, quote, warrior for whom their objective observations are more interesting than their inner logical principles. They are primarily concerned with experiencing a direct photographic relationship with the objects around them. The word I like to use to describe the ESTP nature is conquering. This may sound similar to the word I used for the ENTJ, subjugation. In typing historical figures especially, the ESTP and ENTJ can be difficult to tell apart, but the distinction between them helps reveal the ESTP's core. The word subjugation, at least in the way I use it, implies that the focus is on eliminating the obstacle and the exhilaration comes after the ENTJ has won the fight. For the ESTP, however, the word conquering is meant to imply that while winning is exhilarating, the focus is more on the fight itself, the act of conquering, rather than the moment after. The ENTJ loves the control and power that is earned by means of a fight. The ESTP loves to fight in itself and to fight well. Most of this can be explained by contrasting the ESTP's extroverted sensation with the ENTJ's extroverted thinking. First, the ENTJ is a rational thinker who is focused on the judgment or conclusion of a thing and where it fits into a certain scheme, while the ESTP is focused on experiencing ideas or events and getting as much out of them as possible. 
because the idea is essentially dead once it is filed away in their mind. The ENTJ's extroverted thinking fights as a means to an end, which end is whatever they really want. But the ESTP's extroverted sensation fights because what it really wants is the experience of the fight itself. Of course, when I say fight, I mean that metaphorically. ESTP preferences do not predispose an individual to violence as far as I am concerned. By fight, I mean any kind of endeavor the ESTP may undertake, everything from entrepreneurship to big game hunting to acting to giving a speech. In all of these, the ESTP mindset is similar to the ISTP in that both want to perform the activity well in real time and remain flexible and expert enough to adapt to sudden changes. But while the ISTP is focused on strategizing, understanding, and mastering the activity, the ESTP is focused on experiencing, performing, and ultimately conquering through the activity. This is not meant to imply that extroverted sensation is unthinking or synonymous with enhanced sense perception. Sense perception is a biological trait, and Jungian typology has nothing to say about biology. Jungian typology does, however, talk about the philosophical perspectives people take towards information, and extroverted sensation has the most direct relationship to the outside world of all the functions. Extroverted sensation types aren't just sensitive to their immediate surroundings, but to the general state of affairs in the world, from news to personalities to how things work. This leads into another core aspect of the ESTP, that they live in the here and now. This has many more implications for the ESTP than are usually recognized. The ESTP is not, at least not necessarily, a slobbering hedonist or the grasshopper who didn't prepare sufficiently for winter and ended up freezing in the cold. Dominant extroverted sensation is often characterized by a refined taste, and living in the here and now does not mean extroverted sensation is morbidly nearsighted. Rather, the ESTP's grounding in the present implies that they are exceptionally resourceful, because they don't rely on speculation or future visions to unfold, but work with whatever they have at hand, here and now, in the thick of things, in the fray, where stuff is happening all the time. In the midst of battle, there is no time for speculation of what could be, only an absolute focus on what really is, otherwise game-changing opportunities may pass you by. This here and now mentality gives the ESTP a distinct impatience, or more accurately, a desire to keep moving. Several quotes from famous ESTPs can demonstrate this better than I can. I have never procrastinated about anything. Let us rather run the risk of wearing out than rusting out. A good solution applied with vigor now is better than a perfect solution applied ten minutes later. We cannot stand like an old lady at the middle of the street crossing without getting hit. The ESTP's energy naturally flows into the here and now, and not into long-term planning, distant speculation, or strategic waiting, as it is for many INTJs or INFJs. Thus, ESTPs often work best when in the thick of things, by throwing themselves right into the fray, where things are fast enough to keep up with their resourceful and powerful minds. ESTPs often have a fascinating ability to overcome incredible obstacles through little more than a rallying speech and a blitzkrieg of pure horsepower applied in a very resourceful way. For instance, when Eisenhower sent General Patton a message to bypass the city of Trier, as it would take four divisions to capture it, Patton replied saying he had already taken the city of Trier with only two divisions, and asked, What do you want me to do, give it back? In other words, the ESTP's direct relationship with the here and now allows them to achieve things better by acting immediately with strength, vigor, and willpower, rather than reserving their strength and portioning it out over time. Anything could happen in ten minutes, they might say. Better to act now so we don't miss any opportunities. If we don't flinch and maintain a resolute courage, it will amaze you what we can do. There are three more distinct effects of the ESTP's extroverted sensation, here and now focus. First, the here and now tends to take precedence over anything in the future, including previous plans or even agreed rules. For instance, Patton taking the city of Trier before receiving any direction to do so, or Douglas MacArthur's disobedient advance towards China in the Korean War. 
the ESTP can sometimes be annoyed that rules, plans, or authority are causing them to miss a beautiful opportunity. Second, the ESTP greatly appreciates variety in their life because they are neither holding to any part of the past or projecting extensively into the future. Therefore, there is no reason for them to settle into a routine. This is also because extroverted sensation, like extroverted intuition, analyzes different angles of a thing. But rather than examining its possibilities from different angles and thereby getting a much more broad view around the object, they analyze the thing itself from different angles, getting a more focused view. Nevertheless, extroverted sensation naturally resonates with the idea that there is more than one way to skin a cat, as opposed to the sentiment of introverted intuition, which may recognize the merit of this statement, but still unconsciously feels that there is an ideal way to skin a cat. Third, the ESTP perspective, and therefore their descriptions of things, are often like vivid snapshots. The ESTP knows how to describe things in a very visceral way, to recreate the suspense or beauty or awe that comes in a single moment. While introverted intuition is known for creating very compelling depictions of possibilities, such as Plato's theory of forms or Nietzsche's Ubermesh, extroverted sensation is known for creating very compelling depictions of reality, such as Hemingway's terse but vivid writing style or Patton's brutal and visceral explanations. Tertiary extroverted feeling lends another advantage to the ESTP. They can adapt to the sentimental standards surrounding them. In other words, the practiced ESTP can be very good at making people feel comfortable, pleasing others, keeping up appearances, and putting on a good show. This is the ESTP's famous and notorious power of persuasion, which has earned them the stereotype of a con man or salesperson. This stereotype should be taken in the same way that the ENTJ is stereotypically a brutal tyrant. And while the unpleasant version of the ESTP may be conceived as a con man, the stereotypically pleasant version would be a Winston Churchill carrying the spirit of the British people through the raging heart of World War II. The ESTP's visceral and vivid descriptions and direct relationship with facts and moments in time, as well as their sometimes stubborn holding to logical hard principles, yet charming and compelling understanding of other people and what they find encouraging, all of this combines to give the ESTP potential as a brilliant spokesperson. However, the ESTP's dominant extroverted sensation, as I have alluded to before, represses introverted intuition. It might be of interest that the ESTP is the unrepressed or alternate universe version of the INFJ, if you will. Because while the INFJ represses extroverted sensation and has less developed introverted thinking, there are more dominant traits for the ESTP, who alternatively represses introverted intuition and puts less focus on extroverted feeling. Relationships between the INFJ and the ESTP can therefore be interesting, to say the least. Historical figures of these types have demonstrated a certain mistrust, frustration, or even disgust of each other. And this could likely be attributed to the fact that each represents the other's repressed side, the side that always trips them up and confuses them the most. Thomas Jefferson and Andrew Jackson found each other less than agreeable, and Churchill's disgust of Gandhi is well known. But concerning repressed introverted intuition in the ESTP, if we consider extroverted sensation to be focused on the here and now, and then consider introverted intuition to be focused on practically everything but the here and now, possibilities independent of reality, distant predictions of the future, and overarching patterns of the past, well, the ESTP finds such speculation to be objectionable. ESTPs love to throw themselves into the thick of things, rather than wait around for a plan to properly mature, and their direct relationship to objects makes anything above or around objects, much less above or around their own subject, anything but relevant. For this reason, the ESTP is known for greatly disliking academic banter or jargon, or long-winded philosophizing, which they often feel is pompously assuming intelligence when it has no immediate relevance at all. The ESTP can also be annoyed or frustrated with those who require the time to contemplate and patiently wait for a future vision to unfold, 
for instance, Churchill's disgust of Gandhi's civil disobedience. While the ESTP may revile the contemplative spirit of introverted intuition, the truth is, as with all types in their repressed functions, that the ESTP finds introverted intuition just as enticing and dangerous as the INFJ finds its repressed extroverted sensation. The ESTP is most often tricked by their introverted intuition into overestimating the reach of their ideas. The ESTP is a big idea person. For while they don't like to wait around, they do have big plans that they seek to implement in their resourceful style. But sometimes these big ideas get too big so that they don't pan out as the ESTP thought they should. A great example is Douglas MacArthur's advance on the Chinese in the American-Korean War. He had already won a significant portion of Korea, but in his excitement he believed that the United States could successfully conquer all of Korea and even begin a winning war against China. Thus, caught a hold of by his introverted intuitive vision, this vague speculation that he felt must be fulfilled, he disobeyed orders and marched further into northern Korea, inciting the Chinese to earnestly reinforce the northern Koreans. MacArthur underestimated the Chinese army and was driven back into South Korea, losing much of his previously conquered land. So, in summary, the ESTP is conquering, loving the fight for its own sake. Their focus on the here and now makes them extremely adaptive and resourceful, preferring to put their energy into present action rather than waiting for a long-term plan to develop. Their tertiary extroverted feeling grants them exceptional powers of persuasion and encouragement, while their repressed introverted intuition makes them aversive to academic long-windedness and overestimating their intuitions. The best list of example ESTPs can be found at CelebrityTypes.com and includes Alexander the Great, Winston Churchill, Theodore Roosevelt, George S. Patton, Andrew Jackson, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Douglas MacArthur, Ernest Hemingway, Epicurus, Dale Carnegie, Alfred Hitchcock, Angelina Jolie, Jack Nicholson, Ben Affleck, Amy Winehouse, Judy Dench, Helen Mirren, and Taylor Swift. Thanks for watching, and for all the ESTPs out there, thanks for your vitality, courage, and resourcefulness in dealing with the present world.